This video is going to go over how you can build a somewhat realistic uh, DNS architecture in Packet Tracer for testing. Uh, so essentially I wanted to, to put some access control list on this environment to show what we need to add for DNS to work in one of my classes. So essentially we, we've been building this network over the past couple weeks and we added DNS servers this week. Uh, and the way we set it up was we loaded a DNS on an actual server in class, and then we pointed our clients to that server for DNS. And then this server forwards requests out to the RichNet DNS server for anything it doesn't know. Um, and then it also hosts domains for an internal domain. We have an internal domain that lives on this server, so my internal clients can use that domain name to get to this server. And then we have an external domain name that my external client can get to. So normally I just stick all my DNS records on, on one server and have everything out here. But I wanted to simulate how this works in the real world. So I was looking into, into DNS and Packet Tracer, and it turns out you can actually simulate it pretty well. So just to give an overview of what, what the end result is supposed to be, from the outside I, can get, I should be able to get to my student99.lab domain. And that worked by domain name. <clears throat> and from the inside, I should be able to get to my internal domain name. So my internal domain name should work, and that works. And from the inside, I should also be able to get out to the internet. I put internet in, la in air quotes because it's not really the internet, uh, but my public domain name that I host out on the internet. So. And that works. So how, how do you make all that work in Packet Tracer? Well, um, first off, my internal clients, like I said, are using my internal server at 10.1.1.130 for DNS. So if we go to that server, um, we'll look at how that's set up for DNS. You go, go to the DNS service on the services tab, and you can add some records. By default, DNS is not turned on, so make sure you turn it on. And basically, for my for my, my records I'm hosting for my domains, I just added an A record. So I have an A record, you know, you type that name in the name box, you pick the record type, and you put the IP address. So for my, for my domain names that I'm hosting, I just needed to create A records. So when I, when I run the, the connection from here, from my client, I put in rll.lab, my server returns that. That's easy enough. So the, pro the question is, when I am trying to get to a domain that I do not own, how do you set that up? So in this case, I'm going to go to cnt.lab. My client is going to ask my server about cnt.lab. cnt.lab lives out here as far as DNS goes, so I have to configure this server to know how to ask that server questions about cnt.lab. So the way you configure that is... What I've found is you need to add two records. Add a name server record for your domain. So in the name, you put the domain you're interested in. You change the type to name server record. And then you put a server name, which is a DNS name that your server is going to be. And then you need to have a NS record that goes along with that uh, server. Uh, sorry, not an NS record. An A record that goes along with that server name. So now when I go to cnt.lab, I go... And it, it goes to the page, so that tells me that I'm asking my server. My server's using those two records I added, my NS record for the domain and my A record for the domain, to get out to that, to that server. So um, that's how you can set that up. I did the same thing on this server. So out here, out here, my public domain name, student99.lab, that works. So it was the same setup out here to make that work. I created a name server record for student99.lab. I created an A record for ns.student99.lab that points to the NAT address. Uh, so my router is doing NAT for my private IPs. So it points to that NAT address to deliver that traffic to, to my name server. So interestingly enough, I wanted to verify that it was working. So I had this, I already had the sniffer. I'll, I'll clear that for a moment. So I was like, oh, is this actually doing what I think it's doing? So when I went over here, I tested from my client and then I wanted to look at the traffic in the sniffer and I have HTTP traffic, but no DNS traffic, which 
I thought was weird because I thought it would do through the request. I have my filters for my sniffer down here to show me DNS. Um, so it's actually pretty cool. It's working in a very realistic manner that my server is caching records. So if you've ever managed DNS, you know that DNS cache can be can be somewhat of a pain to deal with uh, when your users are, are trying to do things and they've cached bad bad records or your servers cache bad records or somebody's changed the IP of one of their systems and DNS hasn't uh, propagated through the internet yet. So Packet Tracer actually is, is doing a very realistic job on on that by, you know, again, I did it again with no with no no DNS request by caching the records. So if I go clear my cache, clear my DNS cache, Now when I go request the page, my server, my, my, my internal DNS server, my internal DNS server has to actually send that request. And if we look now, hey, check that out. It actually sent the DNS request. So I thought that was, uh, I thought it was pretty cool how you can actually realistically um, re build, a, build a somewhat realistic architecture uh, for testing in, in Packet Tracer. I, I, like I said at the beginning, I'd always just done very, very simplistic, very simplistic things uh, with DNS, just putting everything on one server. But you can actually build a pretty realistic, pretty, pretty realistic architecture uh, with DNS. So now I need to go make another video that shows how to add the access list I need um, to make that all work with access control list in place. So. Find that video if you want to watch that one.